Hi guys, in this video we are going to discuss the number of beautiful subsets from lead code. So the problem states that you are given an array nums of positive integers and a positive integer k. A subset of nums is beautiful if it does not contain two integers with their absolute difference equal to k. Now we have to return the number of non-empty beautiful subsets of the array nums. A subset of nums is an array that uh, can be obtained by deleting some possible zero elements from nums. And two subsets are different if and only if they uh, if the chosen indices to delete are different, right? So that's the basic definition of subsets. I hope everyone knows this. Now we want to create a beautiful subset. So over here, the beautiful subset will be two, four, six, and two, six. Now two, four and four, six won't be beautiful subsets. The reason being that two, four has a difference of two and you want to avoid that, right? So how would you do that? So the basic thing is that just look at the constraints. The constraints are just going up to 20. Now, even if you construct all the possible subsets that would take you two to the power 20 complexity, uh, two to the power 20 is uh, something we can utilize, right? So that is one way to go. So that is good enough. Like we can go ahead with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a pretty standard code or a pretty standard uh, subset uh, generate, uh, generating code. Uh, the only thing over here would be the if statement or the check that if the uh, particular subset is valid or not valid. So we are doing that over here. So let me walk you through the code itself. So what the code is doing is firstly, it's setting the result to zero. That's obvious, right? Initially, I'm not generating any subsets and then it's calling this recursive function call or calculate whatever you may want to call it. So what it does is that firstly check that if I've reached the end of the array, in that case, I already have a valid sub sub array with me, right? So if that's the case, increment result, right? And then return. If that's not the case, then let's just assume that I'm able to uh, include the current element into my subset, right? So if that's the case, then I'll say that, uh, can I include? Yes. Can't I include? No, right? So can't, no, you can actually use the alter, uh, opposite statement. I don't know why I use this, but yeah. So I'll say that, okay, so there's no, uh, I want to assume that I'm able to include the current element in the subset. Then I'll loop over all the elements that I've processed till now. So I have processed elements from I is equal to zero till uh, I dx minus one. So I'll be going for all these elements. I'll check that if I've considered the current element to be a sub uh, element in the subset, right? Or the L, uh, index element at index i to be present in the subset. I can check that by using mask. So I'm using bit masking over here. Now, I hope everyone knows what bit masking is. If you don't, don't worry. I'll link a, a video in the comment section. You'll be able to understand that. Okay. So I'll check if the current element has been set. If it has been set, right? Then the equation that should satisfy or the criteria that should satisfy is that the difference of that element at index i and the difference of the current element should not be k, right? Or the absolute difference should not be k. If the absolute difference is k, then that means I cannot include my current element i dx into the subset. If that's the case, so if it becomes k, I'll set my can't do so. Okay, uh, so it will mean that I can't include the current element into my subset. If that's not the case, right? So I can. So I'll keep oh, like looping over it. And then I'll say that if I can't include, right? If I can't include, so this would give me one. Now, technically, this would uh, this entire thing would give me uh, one only when I can include, right? So this is a not over here. I hope that makes sense. Okay, then you'll say if you can calculate, uh, like if you can include this particular element, then you'll rec uh, recursively try for this call or you'll again call uh, call this function with the next ele element or the element at index idx plus one. And you would tell it that I have included this particular element. Now, how would you tell it that I have included this particular element? You will try to set the bit at the location idx. That's the standard way of doing it. I hope uh, you guys know that already. If you don't, let me know. Okay. So you'll say that. After that, you'll say that either way. So even if I was not able to add it or I was able to add it, there is always one uh, possibility that I'll not add it to my subsets and I'll proceed ahead, right? Good enough. So you'll say that I don't want to check. Uh, I don't want to add this particular element. And I want to proceed ahead with the index idx plus one, but the mask would still remain the same. I'm not adding this particular element. So yeah, add this element. Okay. And don't add this element. Okay. So now uh, what you'll do after that is that you'll keep uh, calling this or you just call it for index i equal to zero and this, uh, this will keep computing itself. After that, you'll be having the result in result, right? Or res, but you're gonna subtract minus one from this. Now, why is that the case? Because this, uh, there is going to be one case where the set is empty and they've specifically mentioned that the, you have to return the non empty sub beautiful subsets of the array nums, right? So because of that, we're going to subtract one and we're going to return it. Cool guys. I hope you understood the solution. If you still have a doubt, let me know in the comment section below.
Thanks a lot for watching this video. Bye-bye.